France has many beautiful cities. One of the finest that we'll be showing you in this episode is Aix-en-Provence, a town with that special ambiance of the outdoor restaurants, the cafes, the pedestrian lanes, the little fountains, the historic buildings, street markets, and all kinds of wonderful sites to explore. We'll be taking you there on a day trip, showing you how many wonderful things you can see in only six hours. Of course, if you have more time, this would be a delightful place to spend a couple of nights or maybe a couple of weeks. Colorful street markets are one of the fine attractions here, and they happen every day. But the main markets are on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. We'll be showing you a lot later in the program. And we'll spend a lot of time walking through those pedestrian lanes, looking at the little plazas, the historic sites like City Hall, fountains surrounded by cafe tables, and much more. Aix is located in the south of France in the region of Provence, an area with many other beautiful cities. We've been staying in the city of Avignon as a home base for this part of our adventure, just 20 minutes away from Aix by a high-speed train. And while on board, there's a good chance to meet some local people like these friendly French high school kids. You'll see some nice scenery along the way. And while the train ride segment is short, just 20 minutes, you do have bus connections at both ends. From Avignon town, you have to get to the TGV station outside town. And again, arriving at the XTGV, you're 14 kilometers away from X, so you need to get down and hop on the shuttle bus. Purchase your ticket from the driver as you board. We paid about six euro and then find a seat. It's a nice bus and the ride is short. It takes you about 15 minutes to get from the station to the bus terminal in X. And then it's a short walk, a couple hundred meters to get into the center of town itself. We were lucky to walk right into a big market day with clothing and food, the beautiful fruits and produce, the fresh items of Provence and the area. And we'll be showing you a lot more of that later in the program, but we want to get moving along on the main street and the big round fountain, the Rotonde. Aix is famous for its fountains with several big ones along this main street of the Cour Mirabeau and the sidewalk restaurant. It's one of the most glorious boulevards in the country. During our visit, the main market square was under renovation, and so everything had moved to this main boulevard of the Cour Mirabeau, which was wonderful. It became a pedestrian promenade with all of the stalls set up and all the sidewalk restaurants along it. Most famously, Les Deux Garçons. We'll come back to this main street of Cour Mirabeau later in the program, but for now it's time to dive into the pedestrian zone show you quickly on the map an outline of where we're going straight up through the main square of City Hall to the cathedral, then back around and down in a big loop circuit that brings us along some of the main pedestrian lanes, then back to Cour Mirabeau and see more of that fascinating street market. Turning away from the sidewalk cafes of the Cour for now, we take a stroll into the old town along Rue Clemenceau, a typical street mostly for pedestrians and lined with shops. And there's another market, one more block further on Rue Vivernage, called Place Richelme. It's a beautiful little plaza with trees and sunshine streaming in. The natural lighting is filtered by the leaves to give it a golden glow and another lovely mix of items for sale. This market has rather special hours because unlike most markets in Provence, Place Richelme is open every morning except Sunday from 7 a.m. until about 1 p.m. The vendors are the real producers who grow or bake or create whatever it is they're selling. Then you will soon arrive at the prettiest of all squares in town, the Place de l'Hôtel de Ville, the City Hall Square. The clock tower was built in 1510 and became the symbol of local power in the city, towering over the city hall. The main pedestrian lane continues north, changing names now to 
Ugaston de Sapota and leads to X's main church, the Cathedral San Sauveur. The tower of the cathedral is 210 feet high and its construction began in the year 1323. In English, we call this cathedral Saint Savior, built according to legend on the site of a pagan temple. It was constantly revised and unites three naves of these different styles, the Romanesque, Gothic, and Baroque, that flank a legacy with that ancient baptistry and the cloister. There's an octagonal baptistry from the sixth century that's said to occupy the site of a Temple of Apollo, and then it was rebuilt in 1577. The main part of the church dates in its present form from the 11th century. The choir is from 1285, and one aisle was added in the 14th century, making this an architectural patchwork built over a 500-year period which has now survived nearly a thousand years. The doors of the Gothic portal have relief statues representing the prophets and symbols in niches adorned with garlands and flowers. The Archbishop's Palace is located right next to the cathedral. And then just in front is the university with a history museum next door. Another attractive square two blocks west is the Place de Cadour, whose pastel facades surround the large central plaza creating a distinctly Provencal atmosphere, enhanced by a row of outdoor restaurants. So it's a prime spot to have a meal, or maybe enjoy a drink on the terrace. Just a block away around the corner, you'll find another lively street, Rue de Cordelier, and it is a wonderfully local kind of experience. Mostly for pedestrians with a few cars coming through and packed with shops and cafes and all kinds of nice attractions. Take a left and walk south a few blocks and you'll soon arrive at Place de Tanur, slightly off the beaten track with some lovely outdoor restaurants. Not so many tourists around, you'll experience a more authentic sense of place. Here you can admire another one of X's beautiful fountains. This one built in 1761, with a magnificent vase adorning the top of the monument. On each of the four sides of the pedestal, the water flows from cast iron lion's head gargoyles into the basin. Uh, sorry. Uh, the name of the restaurant? Boudoir. The who? Boudoir. Boudoir. Oui. On Place Tanur? Oui. What is that? Chicken and uh, grilled beef. One of several excellent restaurants on this square with very friendly workers. The street heading south from the Place is also quite attractive and leads into a neighborhood with even more little lanes and it's a great place to wander and maybe get a little bit lost. The transit system here has these minibuses, very efficient way to get around. They can carry seven people and they have a low floor that makes it easy to get in and out. You just buy your ticket from the bus driver. Rue Espariat is one of the main streets of the old town with many more attractive side lanes along the way. At this point, we have just about come full circle in our little walk around the old town of X. Place d'Albertas is named after one of the city's leading 18th century families. In 1724, Henri d'Albertas built his private mansion on the Parisian model of royal palaces. The fountain in the center was created in 1862. Around the corner is yet another charming spot, the Place Saint-Honoré, the usual outdoor cafe tables with elegant shops around it and some old streets leading off from it. We have reached the final block of our walk through the pedestrian zone of X. And as you see, it's not only for pedestrians, the little electric minibus comes through and there's a few cars on these wide lanes, but mostly just for people. This four-star deluxe hotel down on the corner would be a great place to stay. A heroic statue of good King René greets us as we arrive back at the Cour and take another walk along this grand boulevard, admiring the cafes and the street market. People love these outdoor clothing markets because you have a tremendous variety of goods for sale and the prices are generally lower than you'll ever find in a store. These same vendors usually come back each week, catering to mostly local clientele, 
so they've got to keep the quality fairly decent and the price is very good. In the other section of the market are the wonderful foods of Provence. You've got a big variety of fresh foods here, your vegetables, most of them grown in the south of France. If it's out of season, if it's winter time, they would be brought in from perhaps the Middle East or Israel, from Africa or Italy. But the south of France has got a wonderful climate for growing agricultural products all year round. And one of the specialties is the olive. There must be hundreds of kinds of olives that are produced in France. As a visitor, you're probably not doing any cooking, so you don't need to purchase vegetables, but you might just get some fresh fruits or some snacks for the road. And there's always some kind of selection of prepared foods that are ready to eat, whether it's a simple sandwich or an elaborate paella. And just to enjoy the people watching here and the scenery, the colors, the smells, the sounds, the beautiful buildings all around, it makes for an adventure just in itself. Some local honey or exotic spices would make a nice gift to bring home. You'll find all sorts of gadgets, miscellaneous supplies, and hardware at the market. Some high-quality kitchen utensils at a bargain price. And those colorful, traditional Provençal fabrics. It's quite delightful to be among the French in their local market. This is the kind of authentic experience that you're never going to get if you're sitting on a tour bus or just paying a quick visit to a place and taking a few photos and then moving along or arrive at the wrong time when there's no market. This lady is not taking care of all seven of these kids by herself. She's got a friend who's doing a little shopping at the moment. We are winding down this visit to Aix-en-Provence, but we have several other programs about this beautiful city that you want to look for in our collection. And we have many other movies about the south of France, a place that we have visited many times and love so much. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified about the new movies we are making about Provence and the rest of Europe and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up? And we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.